Welcome to this episode of My Cine Toolbox. I'm your host, Aaron Stowers. I haven't made a video in probably almost five years for YouTube, and I want to thank all my subscribers who stayed subscribed to the channel and everyone who continued watching my past videos. I, before the pandemic, I got hit with a serious health issue, so I wasn't able to film really seriously in over two years. With that said, I'll have an announcement at the end of the video, uh, so stay tuned to watch. But now I'm back, so I'm gonna try to make videos on a regular basis. You know, I'll do the best that I can. So please like and subscribe if you like the video. Now I am gonna read from a list a little bit because Blackmagic announced the Pixis 6K, which is virtually the same camera as the Cinema 6K. Now that's very interesting. It wasn't a big deal to me that Blackmagic came out with a box. That just wasn't a big deal to me. Um, filmmaking is problem solving. So I have ever been able to work through whatever problems that came with filmmaking. Having a box camera wasn't the end, a deal breaker for me. I've been, been able to make it work. You know, we have camera cages, accessories, and the rest of it. The, the larger issue for me, well, not really an issue if you own a Blackmagic camera, was image quality. And that's what made me adopt the Blackmagic system in itself. I started out with the original, uh, the original cinema camera, then came the original pocket camera, and then I went on to purchase the original Ursa. And have since then have the pocket 4K and the Pocket 6K, the 6K Pro. Blackmagic makes fantastic cameras, but over the years I've been watching people on YouTube complain, oh, we don't have a box camera, we don't have this, we don't have that, and the list goes on. I think this year, NAP 2024, Blackmagic knocked it out the park. They came and gave you everything you want. In the comments, people are still complaining. Yeah, but it's only one XLR, this or that. I think if you ask and you receive, you shall get. If that's Blackmagic's business model, I don't know. But they answered the bell. Not only that, they came out with a new Ursa 12K with no expense spared, that's what Grant Petty said. And they also came out with a 17K IMAX style camera. Now that, you know, both of those cameras are out of range of my budget. I can't afford it. And I'm just being honest, not for what I do, not even on a budget that I have now. But the Pixis is a camera that, if you've been making films for a while and you want a box style camera so you can mount it to a gimbal, there it is. I mean, they answered the bell. So, Year after year, since Blackmagic has been making cameras, they have been shocking everybody with innovation uh, at NAB conferences, year after year. And with the announcement of DaVinci Resolve 19, with some of the new features in uh, Resolve, is incredible. But this, this channel was about cameras, mostly about cameras. Other gear coming up as well, but just filmmaking in itself, maybe not so much on the post-production side, but that may change in the future. So much information about this camera already, but I wanna just give you my take on it. Most customizable camera on the market. Now, with that being said, there's mounting points everywhere on the camera, and it's insane. And I'll have, to, I, I must say, I didn't adapt to the the full frame camera. I will add the Pixis to my toolbox. The customization of the camera is insane and Blackmagic touts it as the most customizable camera on the market. Large frame sensor at 6048 by 4032, same specs as the cinema camera 6K, full frame. Fantastic. The usual, dynamic range 13 stops and I know 
there's been people in the comments talking about, oh, they're still stuck with 13 stops of dynamic range. We could just get more. They gave you more for 14,000. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> if you want 16 stops, it's 14K. And you have to remember, Black Magic is still a business. Next on the list, flexible lens mounts, a L mount, EF mount, and a PL mount. Now, what I'm understanding is the, the EF mount is a locking EF mount, and that's a problem solver in itself. Uh, the L mount, highly adoptable. I've never used the L mount before, and I'm being honest. But I think the L mount is probably the way to go, especially if you're thinking about getting some Nisi lenses. They just adopt natively on the mount. The L mount adopts so many different lenses, almost every lens out there on the market, right? And there's adapters for them, and it just works. And I've even seen some uh, L mount adapters where you can drop in the ND filters. So the fact that the camera doesn't have an ND filter is not really a big deal for me. Having something, so if I wanted to go with Nisi lenses and it adopts natively on the camera, or if I still wanted to use my old tried and true Rokinon lenses, I could just get an EF mount to L mount adapter. And if you already have Rokinon lenses, it's a no-brainer, the, the, the locking EF mount. And also, the broken on lenses are full frame. Let me know in the comments if you think that's a great idea. Let's talk about the monitor, the side monitor on the camera. It's four inches, high resolution, uh, touch screen monitor. And I think, let me know in the comments, but I think it's 500 nits. That's pretty bright, insane to have a monitor like that on the side of the monitor. So Blackmagic went with 12G SDI out, one mini XLR, uh, three point, and also a 3.5 millimeter audio, and time code, headphone USB-C, and locking DC connector. Pretty standard for what they've been offering on their other cameras, with the exception of the 12G SDI out. Now the original cinema camera had SDI. I can't remember, it could have been 6G, could have been 8G, but I can't remember what the specs were on that camera uh, for as far as the SDI out. Let's say something about SDI. When Blackmagic stopped using SDI on their cameras, I thought it was a bummer because if you had the original cinema camera, you had to have a SDI, a monitor. Those monitors, you know, those were professional monitors and they were expensive. So imagine you spend $1,400 on a monitor so you can have the full range of resolution to monitor. And then they go to uh, a HDMI. That was a bummer, but it made a lot of other people happy. Live streaming capabilities. That's amazing. You know, extremely amazing. So if you're on set and you wanna stream live so your clients can watch it and see what you're doing on set and see what all goes into the filmmaking process, or just say you did a crowdfund and you can live stream to everybody who donated to your crowdfund. There's so many possibilities with this. And at the price point of the Pixis, having that option, I can just see loads and loads of use out of that feature. So you're able to take still photos with the camera at 24.6 megapixels. And that's pretty good. That's better than what we had before on the previous cameras. The only thing I would ask for out of that, since now you have a media menu on the cameras, let's see the pictures after we take them. So Blackmagic, if you're listening, add that on the list for on the new firmware updates. Now, lastly but not least, wireless control over Bluetooth. That has been something that was needed many cameras ago. And maybe they did have it, but being able to put your camera on a jib or have someone else have the DP or the director 
operating a camera remote control over Bluetooth up to 30 feet, that's huge because maybe you're using it for a crash cam, right? So having that app connected to the camera 30 feet away, boom, fire it off, hit record, change the settings, big thumbs up. Black Magic has finally answered the power consumption of the batteries, what batteries have in on life. Now that wasn't really an issue for me because right off the bat, I always use V-mount batteries on my cameras. The original cinema camera, which I was an early adopter of, had internal battery that lasted 45 minutes and people complained left and right over that. Silly idea. How could you do that? It's only 45 minutes. It was just on and on and Blackmagic took it away. I don't think people was looking at the big picture. And sometimes I think when people complain about these features, they really don't have the camera. Because if you had the camera and you know that if you were doing a live recording where you cannot stop recording or run out of battery, the internal battery was a fantastic idea because you could swap battery plates and continuously record. That was one of the things that baffled me. Like, are you serious? I mean, it wasn't meant, it was never meant to be. First of all, let's say this. As someone who comes from the sports broadcast world, and I've worked on some pretty large, large film sets like Transformers. I can tell you this, professional cameras don't come with batteries at all. So this is a professional camera slash with consumer capabilities because so many people started getting into the film making world that didn't come from a professional background. They learned through YouTube University and that's okay. And that's fine. Professional cameras normally don't come with any batteries. So you always had to rig your camera up and put a professional battery solution on your camera, V mount or gold mount. That was just something you, you knew you had to do in the business. So it never was pretty, it, it never was a problem for me, but I understand the cost factor in a V-Mount battery versus a battery or some of these other camera companies that make these batteries with low power consumption and the batteries last all day. There's trade-offs in anything. I would say that even now with the longer battery life of the Sony batteries, right? And I've been reading online or in the comments, people were complaining about that. Put a V-mount battery on there. People were complaining about no ND filters. If you've been filmmaking for a while, years, especially years, you have some ND filters. Trust me, trust and believe, you have some ND filters. And if you don't, get some. Having them built in, yeah, it's convenient, but they built them into their larger cameras or just get the Pocket 6K Pro, has that. If you want the box format, as for now, but I guarantee you, the second generation of the Pixis will be a bigger battery with ND filters. If you want a box camera, this is what you get now. But if you notice, Blackmagic cameras evolve over time. So all the features that you see on the camera now, which is a great starting point, but I guarantee you over the next three years of the life of this camera, there'll be so many firmware updates of things we hadn't even thought about. And I have been with Blackmagic, like I said before, since the original cinema camera and I've had plenty of the cameras. Now, I agree with a lot of the comments about the problem, but filmmaking is problem solving in the first place. And if you're not willing to dig in and solve some of the problems you may have on set, then this is probably not the business for you. Now, I don't wanna insult anybody. I don't want people to come at, well, come at me in the comments, I love it. Let's have a conversation. That's the reason why I started this channel in the first place. Was it for it just to be about me and the gear that I have? 
I always want to hear from you and what you're shooting with, how you're using the cameras that we all use. We all can learn from each other. And I think that Blackmagic offering these cameras at these price points, they're giving something for everybody. Now Blackmagic has a full line of cameras. I mean, they are cranking them out and offering them up these cameras at some incredible price points with features that normally cost you north of $10,000. Ask red owners, <laughs> trust and believe, okay? So, I mean, I think Blackmagic is doing a fantastic job and now they're offering cameras that are for the major DPs out there. When you start looking at $14,000 for a camera. That's not something you want to just have around just because you're a hobbyist. That's, you know, for extreme filmmaking. You, you maybe can fork out three, four thousand dollars for a camera and pick it up every once in a while. But at $12,000, I'm shooting every second, every day. I may get four hours of sleep. Now I'm just being funny, but seriously, I mean, just for a moment, I know this is about the pixels, but guess what? That 12K, that 17K, those are 17K. Black without, I'm not even gonna talk about it anymore. But thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what else you wanna see. Um, let me know if you wanna know what over the years I've acquired in my toolbox since I haven't made a video in a while and I'll be glad to let you know. Um, and thanks for sticking with me. Please, I, I wanna thank you all. I love you guys for that. Thanks for the comments and inboxing me to see where I was and checking on me. I know plenty of you guys didn't know that I was pretty sick. Um, uh, you know, I was, I, I'm not gonna go into it now. That's another uh, video, but I was pretty sick. I'm lucky to be here and thank you. Now I will have a link in the description below if you wanna buy me a coffee, right? Help make my day. And also, let me know if you wanna uh, put together for a fundraiser. You know, we could put together a fundraiser and I'll reveal the gear. If we raise the money uh, enough to buy the gear, I'll use all of the funds to go to gear. I'm not working like I used to. I used to work for Fox Sports. Uh, I'm not able to do that full time anymore. So if you feel like you want to help me out, uh, I love you for that. So until next time, peace.